WMNH, rip the knob off. That is Losing Game. That is from uh, 2020. That is Brooks Young. And uh, that song is a, a personal favorite of mine of his. We are uh, going to spend this hour uh, devoted to uh, Brooks Young, remembering Brooks Young. Uh, if you don't know, uh, Brooks Young was uh, fatally killed in a car accident in Alton on uh, Route 11, I believe, earlier this week. Um, I was quite shocked uh, when I saw the news. And uh, Brooks is someone who had been on the show uh, quite a number of times over the years, I had the honor of, of interviewing him. And what I would like to do with this hour, so a couple things. I want to share some of his music, of course, uh, in memory of Brooks and uh, such, a, such a talented musician and just a really, really good person, too. Just such a great guy. So, you know, we'll play some of, some of his music. And I might even, I have it queued up. The last interview that I did with Brooks, uh, the last time that he was on, 
not not too many months ago, actually. Uh, I, we might we might revisit some of that too. I did hear from a lot of people over the course of the week, so <clears throat> I know people are tuned in, and I know people are grieving. So I I'll just tell you, I first interviewed Brooks quite a few years ago. The first time that I interviewed him, it was not on this show. It was on another show that I do that airs elsewhere. But uh, it was my first time meeting him. And I actually went to, uh, I brought a portable setup with me and I went to Strings and Things in Concord uh, because Brooks was actually working there at the time. So, you know, while pursuing his, uh, you, know, you know, very early in his career, but his quickly, uh, it was accelerating fast as his uh, music career. Um, it, it was taking off. I think he had just played with BB King when I interviewed him. I think that had just happened that either just happened or it was about to happen, but I feel like it had just happened. And, uh, so, you know, he had plenty to talk about, but, uh, even just meeting him that first day, going to strings and things to meet him. And he just, you know, right away, he just had such a positive attitude as well. He should have, you know, some, some wonderful things were happening, but, but he just, he was positive and very humble. He obviously enormously talented. Uh, that was uh, apparent and clear. Um, hell of a guitar player and, a, and a, a great voice too, kind of a unique voice. I can't think of anyone who sounds quite like him, but it was such a pleasure to just sit and talk with him. And I was thinking about this yesterday, actually, as I was kind of in my mind, just sort of mentally preparing for today. I was thinking about how when, when we lose somebody who is a musician, it's, it's, at least in my experience, it's interesting how you don't necessarily have to have known them that well personally to feel such a connection with them. So when I first realized, uh, it was actually, uh, Mike from, uh, Mike G from, uh, strings and things when he had posted on Facebook, what had happened. That was when I first became aware of it. And you know, I just felt like I'd been punched in the gut. It was, it was such a, a terrible feeling. It was just such a shock to see that Brooks had passed away. And at that point, there wasn't a lot of information other than it was a car accident. But it's interesting how, um, so I never, I didn't really get to know Brooks other than professionally in the sense that I'd never spent any time with him socially. Um, I'd seen him play live, of course, and I got to interview him a number of times through the years, but, but when you are a fan of someone's music, you feel connected to them in a way that transcends sort of traditional friendship. If that makes sense. That's why, for example, if you're a big fan, you know, if, if it's someone, you know, really famous and, and Brooks had a lot of success, but if it's, you know, a, a famous musician or a famous actor or a famous author, anyone who's created any kind of art, if if their art connects with you in some way and makes you feel something, then you also feel something for that person, even if you've never met them and you never will meet them because uh, they're famous and they're they're sort of out of reach. But you feel a connection. And then if they pass away, you go, oh, no, I, I feel a sense of loss, even though it's someone you may have never met. And I think that with Brooks, obviously, I had met him because I'd interviewed him quite a few times. But, but again, I'd, I'd never spend any time with him socially. Not really. But being a fan of his music, but also in, in, over the course of interviewing him, and this is something I was thinking about. I was thinking about this yesterday, and I'd never really quite thought of it this way before. But in reflecting on Brooks, when I and I assume this is true for other people, too, who do this, where, where you interview people. It's sort of like, it's a form of getting to know someone. So like I said, I never spent any time with them socially. But when I'm interviewing someone and I'm trying to learn, it's like getting to know someone, but in a very compressed period of time, if that makes sense. If I sit down with someone and I do a one hour segment where we're going to play some of their music and I'm going to ask them a lot of questions because I'm curious. I want to know, I want to know about their music, but I also want to know about them as a person. I want to learn and I have a natural curiosity, which helps to do this, right? I want to learn as much about that person as I can and try to get as much of a sense of that person as I can. So it's kind of like, 
a different version of getting to know someone over the course of years socially because you get to know them personally. But what I'm doing, I'm also getting to know them, but in a very compressed period of time because I'm asking them questions about things that I'm specifically curious about. And I'm trying to learn as much about that individual as possible. And I think that that's part of why, even though I didn't know Brooks that well outside of all of this, I think that's part of why it was such a a shock when I saw that he had passed away. Because again, being a fan of his music, that's part of it, but also just having sat down with him and having those conversations where I'm trying to learn as much about him as a person as possible. I think that contributes to this, that sense of loss where it's like, I feel like I've, I, I just lost a good friend, even though I didn't know him that well socially. And I'd never quite, it was, you know, there are other people I've interviewed who've, who've left us. And, and there's of course, you know, people I've been, fans of who, you know, have passed away and they'd say, oh, that's terrible. I'm, I'm a fan of their work, but I'd never really thought of it that way in terms of, you know, getting to know someone over the course of an interview. I'd never thought about it in quite this context until, until this week, until I was thinking about Brooks and, and kind of analyzing that sense of, of terrible loss that I'm feeling and that I know uh, many of you who are listening are feeling as well. And you didn't have to be around him very long to be drawn to him anyway. I strongly suspect that most people who met Brooks Young liked him very much immediately and were drawn in by his his positivity and his charisma and, and of course, his immense talent. So it was uh, quite a shock to me. But I'm going to play a song in the meantime. I'm going to play another Brooks Young song. And... Um, This one seems appropriate. This is from uh, 2015. This is called Silver Wings. Silver Wings Shining in the sun
That's such a great track. That is Restless. That is Brooks Young. And if you are just joining us uh, this hour, we are remembering our departed friend, uh, Brooks Young, enormously talented musician and a spectacular human being uh, who uh, just passed away uh, in a car accident earlier this week. And um, I think what I'm going to do now, actually, is I'm going to play, I'm going to share a little bit with you. Uh, not the whole thing, obviously, because we won't have time. And I do want to get some more songs into, but I'm going to share a little bit with you of um, Brooks' uh, final appearance on the show the last time that I interviewed him. Uh, so uh, here it is. This is from earlier this year. Viewers, and we enjoy having you here, but also you uh, you brought your guitar. Oh, that's a beautiful... I'm, I'm, now I'm bummed our video's not working because that's a beautiful guitar, but oh, we, will, thank you. We, will take, uh, we will take pictures while you're playing. That's... Uh, wow. Yeah, thank you. That's thank really you. nice. Yeah. It, uh, it's my love of... Uh, Guitars has grown over the years. And, uh, so this is a uh, Gibson J200. Yeah. And um, I used this guitar on the uh, George Thorogood tour. Yeah. Um, as well my, as my electric when I uh, sat in and played with George. And got this right before I left on tour. And uh, the guitar is beautiful. It goes with me everywhere. So It's gorgeous. It really is. Yeah. It's uh, fairly new to me. I, I, I just picked it up um, right before I left on tour. And uh, so I've only had it for a few months. And, uh, oh, really? I, yeah. I haven't even recorded or done anything like that with it yet. So this is its first, like, not on stage performance. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. Brooks, I'm dying to hear you play. Sure. And uh, let me um, let me get that other mic up. So uh, oh, there we are. While you're doing that, I'll tell a little story about this song real quick. Yeah, go for it. Um, so funny thing is, is uh, th this song is called I Believe. And... Um, you know, me and the, the guys in the band, we wrote this song 14 years ago. And just recently, I was at home. Um, I had a day off. And if anyone's followed the band over the years, you know, I'm a big NASCAR fan. You know, and we've performed for NASCAR to track many times, the band. So <clears throat> on Netflix, there's a new NASCAR documentary. And I'm a huge fan of Hendrick Motorsports NASCAR. I'm on Netflix. I'm sitting on the couch eating some lunch. And I'm watching this big moment where Hendrick Motorsports gets their 300th win. Oh, really? Big yeah. moment in the episode. And Jeff Gordon's up there. And all of a sudden, I'm hearing a, a song that I'm like, geez, I must have left the speaker on or my phone's on playing one of my songs. And no, it wasn't. It was in the Netflix documentary for nascar oh no kidding yeah That's this awesome. big moment and jeff gordon's on the screen and, <clears throat> and this is just recently and uh i was like no i was like wow this is so i'm on the phone i'm like calling everybody ah. i'm like hey you know and it was just a really cool moment because i grew up as a nascar fan and like yeah. jeff gordon was my favorite driver and 
And to have one of our songs in this big moment yeah. on this NASCAR documentary on Netflix, and it just came out. It's a very hot show. Everyone was watching it. And it's just, I, I like had to sit back for a moment. I was like, wow, this is great. That's and, awesome. Uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll play it for you. It's a song called I Believe. Uh, seeing that we just played Restless, something new, I'll play you something a little... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got uh, got that other mic up, so... Brooks right. Young is with us live in studio. Called, uh, I Believe. All right. I believe that some things are true It's just me that you're trying to talk to The closer you get, the harder I fall I would do anything, anything at all I would swim across the ocean Fly to the moon I would walk a thousand miles Just to I'll get to you I would walk a thousand miles Just to I'll get to you Yeah I'm relieved to hear your name The same old stories, but nothing else has changed I'm picking up where we left off It seems like forever since we've been apart I would swim across the ocean Fly to the moon I would walk a thousand miles Just to get to you I would walk a thousand miles Just to get to you I would walk a thousand miles Just to be with you Yeah And I would walk a thousand miles Just to be with you So there you have it. That is uh, that is from the final appearance of Brooks Young on the show uh, when I got to interview him and he played live. Of course, the entire thing is available online if you want to hear it. But if you are just joining us today, we are remembering Brooks Young. Um, and I think I'm going to play. This is another personal favorite of mine. Uh, great, great track. We'll play a couple more here. A couple more studio tracks. Uh, this is called uh, Ventilator. By, uh, by the great Brooks Young.
Wow, what a cool song. I like the, um, there's a little bit of a fake out at the end too, where it sounds like it's fading out and it sort of is, but not quite. And then it fades out. It kind of, like you kind of think it's fading out sooner than it does. I like that. I like that. That is uh, Hold On To Your Heart by Brooks Young. That song, by the way, had escaped me. I had not heard that one, but I found it online and I was like, oh, it's one I haven't heard. And the thing with Brooks too is, you know, doing a show like this, I always have to screen the music, but Brooks never had any bad words in any of his songs. So uh, I, I knew that I could uh, play that uh, without pre-screening it and it would not be a problem. <laughs> but uh, if you are just joining us, we are spending this hour remembering our friend Brooks Young, uh, who was uh, taken from us uh, earlier this week in a uh, tragic uh, car accident and uh, such a talented person and um, love his music and uh, and loved him. He was just uh, just a great, great guy. You know, it was interesting. As I said, I'd interviewed him uh, uh, so many times over the years. and But the when I interviewed him in 2023, I interviewed him earlier this year. I'd also interviewed him in 2023. And but I think it was the first time I'd seen him in quite a few years, at least the last time I had seen him definitely, uh, pre pandemic. So, uh, but it's, it's, um, you know, and his hair had, had pretty much turned completely gray, <laughs> you know, he was prematurely gray. Um, he was only 42 when he passed away, but, uh, but it was, it was, um, I hadn't seen him since his hair it, it turned completely gray, but it kind of suited him. It, it, it worked for him, but, uh, yeah, such a, such a great guy. Uh, I think we should, uh, I think we should continue. I hate to say it. It's such a cliche. I think we should let the music do the talking, but I think we should. I do think that's probably the best way to honor Brooks uh, and his memory. So let's play another one. Why not? Uh, This is called Same Old Blues. Brooks Young.
Remembering Brooks Young. Let's play one more.
That is hero of the day, Brooks Young. Taken much too soon. But uh, his music lives on. I suggest you, uh, if you're a fan, you should uh, definitely go online and, and check out. Uh, he was such a prolific songwriter, such a great songwriter, great voice, and one hell of a guitar player, Brooks Young. I'm, uh, I'm honored to have known him.